There are more pet cats in the world than ever before. Sensual, cute, enigmatic, stealthy. Every one of them working its wild and ancient magic on our senses. And yet, as I've already found on this journey, cats still perplex and divide us. My quest to understand them has already taken me from a mysterious Egyptian tomb to a breathtaking encounter with the Lord of the Mayan jungle. I've learned that inside every cat lurks the same wild hunter spirit, and that's despite nearly 4,000 years in our company. But sadly, man is notoriously bad at leaving nature alone. And so I now want to know what we have done to the cat to mould it to our way of life, and whether our meddling with nature has gone too far. It's a question which will take me from a close encounter with the tongue of a cheetah. No, we are done. Lovely brass me too. To the cats who formed a rock band. From the woman who knows how to talk to them. It's all done. We won't even know what to do with them. She's just starting to speak in cat language. To the tragedy of a leopard locked in a cupboard. She put him in a closet, and that's where he lived all day long. I mean, how he survived that, I don't know. I want to discover whether all is well with one of nature's most enduring partnerships between cat and man, or of course, woman. stop to think for a moment, it's incredible that cats live with us at all. Under the genetic microscope, they've barely changed from the wild, solitary creatures that once roamed the Sahara. Back then, there were no cat packs, no cat herds. It was a true loner, until it found us. It is the weirdest of relationships. I love them madly, but I think we're kidding ourselves if we think that cats are remotely interested in what people want from them. Millions of us own them, but they're, they're not really ours. After all, they don't really need us. They could look after themselves if they had to. But that doesn't mean we've stopped trying to master them, which begs the question, would a cat ever take orders from a mere human? To answer that, I'm in Chicago on a bitter winter's day. It's been said that cats are far too smart to do the dumb tricks we get dogs to do. But whoever said that hadn't been to see one of Chicago's oddest cabaret turns, a circus performed entirely by cats. It looks as though preparations for today's show are already well underway. For the record, I usually have little time for performing animals, any more than I have for zoos or wild animals in captivity. But a cat circus intrigues me. Cats are so famously uncooperative. I'm curious to know how ringmaster Samantha Martin persuades them to do anything at all. Hi, Samantha. Hi. Hi, Joanna. Hi, nice to meet you. You're getting stuff ready for the show? Yep, big show today. So. This little white face listening to you talking. Who's this? Oh, this is T Tuna. Tuna. She's the star of the show. Is she? Mm -hmm. Hi, Tuna. Tuna. Uh, what makes Tuna such a good cat for performances? Uh, she's, she's very consistent. She has no fear issues whatsoever. Where some of the other cats, uh, some days they perform, sometimes they don't. It's free will. We, you know, we open up the cage. If they don't come out, that means they don't want to come out. <laughs> so we close the cage and we move on to the next trick. But Tuna always wants oh, she, to... She rang the bell. I <laughs> thought that was the cat ringing the bell. <laughs> Tuna, will yeah. you ring the bell? <laughs> Yes, she's like, attention, attention, come on. <laughs> Here, Tuna, go back to your light, that's quiet. Tuna, she's just switched the light on. Sweet cat. Oh, Tuna is, is brilliant, she really <laughs> is. How do you get a cat to do what you want it to do? I can see you're giving her small, small rewards. But... Oh, it, it's, a lot of it has to do with definitely with a, the, a special treat. You can train a cat to do to, about, just about anything you can train a dog to do. But then where a dog will just be like, I don't care if I only have two breaths left. Whatever you, whatever you want from me, I'll give to you. And cats are like, eh, you know, I don't think so. Dogs will work for love where cats work more for, you know, they want to pay off. They want to see the contract up front. They, they're, they're, they're hard negotiators. Are they your pets as well as your 
as well as your oh, performance. Oh, absolutely. The cats all live with me. I'm not going to say how many cats I have, but I, you know, I always show I'm single. I'm going to stay that way. <laughs> Do you think Mr. Wright is waking up there, Mr. Cat Wright? I somehow I'm doubtful, you know, because not one guy has asked me out after the show. And I mean, I wear this sexy cat outfit. I mean, come on. <laughs> When they said cat circus, I didn't know what to expect. Um, certainly nothing as much fun as this. And the sort of slight sort of dangerous quality of will they, won't they. <laughs> Very exciting. Can't wait for this afternoon's performance. <laughs> Does it matter that your average cat won't fetch a stick or catch a ball? No, of course not. To me, this is much more impressive. Because cats only do the things they want to. And that, in my eyes, is what makes them truly smart. Even so, Tuna and the gang doing tricks is great for a cold Chicago afternoon. But surely cats, compared with dogs, are a bit, well, a bit useless. After all, nobody ever saw a cat bring down an armed robber or guide a blind person across the street.